Time to milk a camel. Hello, Millie. We gotta turn her around. Yeah, I Better move the camera. Can't turn around a camel without her knocking over a camera. All right, Miss. Shall we walk? Let's walk. Walk you over here. Wow, what a tight turning radius you have. You're like a little sports car. The midlife crisis. Is it a Camel arrow. Ah, I like it. It's easy. 80. Camel arrow. Good morning, mister. Uh, oh, so we're getting ready to do our morning milking. I'm just giving her a quick brush in the area where there might be any poop or dust that we don't want to get in our milk. So now we're going to close the stanchion up and uh, milk. Very similar to cows. <laughs> Scoot you forward, Miss Mel. Scoot you forward. There we go. There we go. It's a very similar process to what we do with our cows. The stanchion is a lot different because of how you milk the camel. But uh, same basic calf shearing concept. So now we're gonna let Solomon on. He's gonna initiate the letdown, and then we'll pull him off and we'll start milking. I get my light on. I'm gonna take a quick look at her teats. We wear gloves, it's a hygiene thing. It keeps us from giving her any infection in her teats and sharing disease. I like to do a quick little light inspection, see how the teats look. Tell me when. Camel letdown is fast and furious. You get about 90 seconds to milk him out from the time she lets down. So I try to take him off. He's initiated the process. We can usually tell she starts pooping, uh, but the letdown hasn't happened yet. The teats haven't sw gotten swollen. Swolled. Swolled. <laughs> They're swole. So she's doing great today. We're getting, you want to get a shot of this over my shoulder? This is a cool shot. Can you see that? Yes, Steven, I can see that. Steven. Steven. Okay. Look at that. We're getting a lot today. Wish I had four hands. So she feels good. She feels safe. We're getting so much milk. Her baby's here. Does that make you feel better than yesterday? Yes. Oh, camel face. <laughs> Look at how much. That is a record. Oh, that is great. So we've been getting asked a lot. Ask Homesteady, now that you're milking camels, what are you going to do with the cows? We're going to talk about that. So here we go. Oh, you're going to do cows all day? So what are we gonna do with the cows? We have camels and we're doing camel milk. What are we gonna do with these cows? Do we still have a reason to have these cows? Are we gonna sell them? What's going on with the cows? Are you gonna see them on the channel anymore? Well, first off, the cows, for the most part, aren't really going anywhere. Yes, we are milking camels and we have camel milk now. The reason for that is because we are trying to have food that Kay and the baby eventually can have for themselves because of the baby's allergies. But we don't believe that our whole entire family is allergic to cow milk. I certainly don't think I am. 
and I would love to continue to have some raw Jersey milk and butter and all that sort of stuff. So the cows still have value to us for food, and of course they have value to us because they have calves every year, and those mini Jersey calves are a very valuable product, which we would like to start selling to people out there like you who would like to do this on your own homesteads. The cows will continue to provide food for us, and they will continue to be a good, viable business as part of our homestead business, selling family milk cows. So we decided that we do as a whole want to keep the cows, however, the expense of buying camels, we needed to offset with the sale of a quality calf uh, help us kind of cover some of that expenses. And we really didn't need to have four heifers as much as we'd like to. So we figured we could sell one of the two calves. Then it came down to who were we going to sell. We are sending in. We're sending in our parental verification forms for the calves. So I'm taking their tail hairs, like we did for the. Why did we do it before? For the other genetic test. Oh yeah, for their. Uh, their Jersey BBR test. We're going to do that again, same thing, except to find out who's the daddy. That's Honeybee. Got her two roots. Good. Some of you will remember in a recent video we talked about our sneaking suspicion that Luna and Ladybug were not sired by the same AI straw. <laughs> we saw a lot of differences in Grasshopper. Grasshopper is my favorite of the calves. Uh, she is a little bit, well, she's a lot of bit longer leg than Luna is. She's got a very cool coat. She's got this like spring pepper sprinkle on her coat, these little dark spots. Uh, but she's very different from what should be her half sister. What? She's very different from Honeybee. Her attitude, the way she looks, and so we were wondering, was there a chance that her straws were switched? We can't keep all the cows. Grasshopper will probably be more of a small midsize. So ladybug size are a little smaller. I have ladybug, she's my midsize. Uh, perfect milking cow. And she is the perfect size milking cow. Luna is harder to milk because she's smaller, her teeth, my, my bucket milker doesn't even work on her because it hangs on the ground, it won't, it doesn't get enough suction on her. The ladybug's a great size for us, but we have our ladybug. We have camels to milk, we've got ladybug to milk, I don't need a grasshopper to milk. So, Grasshopper is going to go to a new home. All right, my sample's pulled. I got my <laughs> my craft tape on there because the kids use all my scotch tape. I have no idea where the regular stuff is. Now this is something, these tests you can order online. Uh, either pay online or include your payment when you send the testing in. Then you can print out the form. Just tape the hair sample on there. There's all sorts of tests. This is through UC Davis, Veterinary Genetics Laboratory of University of California, Davis. And each of these tests is $25 to establish paternity. If I wanted to add something else like A2, A2, or pulled, or dwarfism, I could do all that stuff too. Ready to go. All done with your pulls? Yeah. Everybody knows that my favorite is Grasshopper. I pulled her out of Luna. Yes, live calf, baby. Oh yeah, that calf's alive still. Come on, calf. Here we go, come on. 
Yep. Come on. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Yep. It was an awesome experience. I like her attitude. I like her spunk. I even like the way she looks. She's a bit taller than Honeybee. She'll be an easier milking cow. She's like Ladybug. She'll be a little bit taller, easier to milk, but not so big that she's like a full-size Jersey and scary. Awesome family milk cow. And I think she's the coolest looking mini Jersey I've ever seen. She's got like these pepper flakes of dark color and then the white spots. She's a beautiful little calf and I really wanted to keep her. But Kay really loved Honeybee because Honeybee is kind of the cow that she's been breeding for for all these years. She's been trying to breed her own perfect little mini Jersey and uh, Honeybee is a perfect little mini Jersey. Going forward, we already have our milk cow, so the product that we're selling is not milk, it's calves. And the most valuable calf, grasshopper or honeybee, honeybee is the most valuable one. People will pay more money for a full mini jersey than a mid-sized mini. So we decided, you know what, of the two, we'll keep breeding from honeybee's lines. Grasshopper, because we had to pick one, we decided we would go with selling grasshopper. Breaks my heart, that little calf is gonna be the perfect family milk cow but I'm excited to tell you that she is going to be going to a family who is huge Homesteady fans. They're Homesteady pioneers. They've been asking us over and over, are you selling a calf, are you selling a calf? Finally, I said, okay, I think we'll sell you one of the calves. So they're going to a good home, and of course, you'll probably wind up seeing as that happens. It's not gonna happen right away because uh, we wanna keep Grasshopper on Mama for a little bit longer, help her get a really good, healthy start. Uh, so we'll have Grasshopper around here for a little bit longer. But the other cows aren't going anywhere, and we're gonna still be milking cows again in the future, and all that other stuff. Uh, we're not just becoming a camel channel. Thank you for watching this episode of Ask Home Study. If you want to get a question answered in Ask Home Study, it's very simple. Put hashtag Ask Home Study, all one word, in your comment so I can find it later when we go to do Ask Home Study. And if you like the fact that we do Ask Home Study, join the Camel Train. The Camel Train is a lifetime Home Study Pioneer membership. It's one purchase, you get it for your whole life. All our bonus content, our courses, our classes, our live shows, you get our unique camel train t-shirt, one of a kind, and you get a shout out on the show. And uh, we'll let you know. Speaking of the shout out, let's go to today's shout out. Out you go. Out you go, Liam. Go. Do you hear it? Sound of the train, it's time. And then there's a camel going. That's at the end, the camel. I actually added a camel grunt, her idea. Worked really nice. Wow, it's cool. <laughs> I like their little voices. They have really nice voices. Time for the Homesteady Camel Train shout out. We're doing 100 days of 100 videos all about growing your own food so that you and your family are eating healthy, homegrown food that makes you feel better and work better. And in times of emergency, you have your own food. <sighs> and when coronavirus is going around, you don't have to leave the house. That's a plus. Yeah. Today's show is brought to you by Cheney's Ranch. Is that what you say? Today's shout out is Cheney's Ranch. Okay. Today's shout out is Cheney's Ranch. Cheney's Ranch started keeping goats and chickens before I was alive, back in 1983. So those are some experienced goat owners there. Then they moved to town, got out of it till 2010. But then they moved to a five acre property and started over. On Cheney's Ranch, you will find Hereford cows. Oberhasley goats, which are some of my favorite goats. That's because you never owned any. They're beautiful. And then of course, there's the poultry. Bunch of chickens, Chinese geese, ducks, and you will find at Cheney's Ranch a large garden every year. Their goal is to feed their family good whole food. That's what the camel train is all about. So thank you so much Cheney's Ranch for sponsoring this episode. And uh, in addition to your shout out, pay attention for your one of a kind camel train t-shirt. That'll be on its way. Oh yeah, he's beautiful. So Cheney's Ranch has a beautiful Hereford bull. We're gonna put the picture right here, you can see. And if you wanna learn more about them, we'll have a link to their Facebook page below. Thank you. Thank you. If you wanna join the camel train, click the link below or if something pops up here and you can sponsor one of the videos if there are still tickets left. 
selling out quick, so don't wait.